Sonic's mainline games are usually a hit or miss nowadays. We had games like Sonic Colors, Sonic Generations, and Sonic Lost World, which are all games that have mixed opinions nowadays. But I bet you will only remember those games from their console and PC versions. Heck, some of you might not even know that there are actually inferior versions of those games on other consoles, mainly handhelds. Bring in Dimps. We've talked about these guys before. They made Sonic 4. <laughs> made Sonic 4. But they also made the Sonic Rush games and the Sonic Advance games, but most notably, they were responsible for developing downgraded ports of the mainline Sonic games from 2008 onward. We call these quote-unquote inferior ports D-makes around here, and Sonic has a lot of them. But in this video, we're going to be looking through all of the ones that Dimps made in particular, so let's just get this party started with Sonic Unleashed on the Wii and PS2. Now, call me a fake Sonic Unleashed fan, but I actually don't own this game on the PS2. I mean, doesn't look like I'm missing much. But the Wii version is literally the same thing, but it just looks and runs better, so we're going to be looking at that version. Alright, enough rambling, let's just see what this is all about. So, right off the bat, things are different. Very, very different. Let's start with the controls, because they are kind of unique from the HD version of the game. Because this game is on the Wii, motion controls are heavily used for pretty much any special action. This includes combat with the Werehog, homing attacking, and boosting with regular Sonic. Here's a fun story, Child Me got Sonic Unleashed on the Wii for Christmas one year, and he spent half an hour on the tutorial because he couldn't figure out how to homing attack. I mean, can you really blame me? I didn't really have the ability to read the text telling me to shake the remote, and I was also really used to other Sonic games requiring you to double tap the jump button to homing attack. Daytime Sonic also feels kind of different to control in this game compared to the PS3 slash 360 version. I want to say he feels much stiffer, kind of, but I can't really find the right word for it. I gotta say though, the boost is just so nerfed in this version. Instead of being able to hold down a button to go super fast non-stop, the boost in this version of the game is mainly used as a power-up. You see, you gotta fill up these little bars down here with rings, and when you shake your Wii remote, you get a short boost for a few seconds and one of your bars deplete. This does introduce a bit of strategy though, which is a good thing, but I really prefer how the boost works in the HD version and I think everyone else did as well because this form of the boost was never really revisited ever. Now, the Werehog, in my opinion, actually feels pretty similar to the HD versions of the game. However, unless you're using a GameCube controller, Classic controller, or whatever controller that's compatible besides the Wii Mode and Nunchuck, then you can't use buttons to attack enemies. But if you have a Wii Mode and Nunchuck setup going like me, then you have to shake the remote to perform attacks. Yeah, this is neat for like two seconds. I hate force motion controls, man, but at least they give you the option to use a normal controller. Looking at you, Sonic in the secret rings, you piece of sh**. So that covers the gameplay of this port, but the progression is also way different. Metal collecting is pretty much non-existent, mostly. Instead, depending on the rank you get in a level, you get a certain amount of sun or moon medals, which can be used to unlock more missions, just like the HD version. Each country you visit has Gaia temples, which are your main hubs to access levels, and I'm just a huge fan of this. Being able to run around and explore these temples is really cool, because the actual version doesn't allow you to do so, and instead of wandering around aimlessly in a big hub world trying to find a gate for another mission, they're just all right here. Speaking of hub worlds, they're aren't any. Kinda. Instead of traditional hub worlds where you walk around talking to people, we have this point and click kinda thing going on where you can click some buttons to read some dialogue, but that's pretty much it. I much prefer how the hub worlds work in the HD versions because they just feel more alive than in the Wii version. Also, the Wii version has completely different level designs than the PS3 slash 360 version. Heck, the Wii version is actually missing levels from the other version. Missouri is here, but they only did the bare minimum with it. It has the Egg Beetle boss fight because it has story significance, but also, here's something I just found kinda funny. You know how Professor Professor Pickle gets kidnapped by Eggman and you have to save him from his lab in Missouri. Well, in the HD versions, you had to play through a nighttime stage to get to his lab. However, because there aren't any main acts in Missouri in the Wii version, Chip is literally just like, yo, look at this cool hole I found. No, oh, there he is. So, Missouri is definitely watered down, but Empire City is just completely gone. There's no trace of it in this version whatsoever. I understand that this was probably done because they needed to cut corners, especially considering that A, Empire City had absolutely no story significance, and B, they were trying to get this thing up and running on the PS2, but it still kinda sucks. But all in all, Sonic Unleashed on the Wii and PS2 is significantly different from their next-gen counterparts. Now, I'm definitely not with the crowd who say that they prefer this version over the HD version, but I can definitely see where they're coming from. 
This version of the game is just much more streamlined at the end of the day, which is probably ideal for most people, but personally, I still like the HD version way more. Jumping into the meta era, we have Sonic Colors on the Nintendo DS. From this point onward, all of the ports will be on handheld consoles, so they're going to be drastically different from their console counterparts. So what makes this version different from the Wii version? It's literally just Sonic Rush. Which, hey, I'm perfectly fine with. I mean, if it isn't fixed, then don't break the... Um, yeah, never mind. Yeah, there is a lot different about Sonic Colors on the DS. The gameplay is pretty much the same as Sonic Rush, but new to this game are the homing attack and stomp, which are nice additions, but I'm just so used to how the Sonic Rush games work, so this just took a very long time to get used to. Wisps are also here, of course, but there are some exclusives to the DS version, those being the Burst and Void. I mean, they're fun? Yeah. The bosses are also completely different, and just like the Wii version, there are repeats, but it is what it is. The boss fights are still fun, and are actually kind of challenging this time around. Along with the gameplay, the soundtrack, the level design, hell, even the music is mixed differently, but what really stands out to me is the story. So, in the Wii version, we have Sonic and Tails going to stop Eggman in his giant evil amusement park. Yeah just Sonic and Tails, but in the DS version, however, we have surprise cameos from many characters across the Sonic series, including Knuckles, Amy, Cream Shadow, Silver, you get the idea. Oh, Blaze is here too, she may not be playable, but she's in the game. To be completely honest, while all these cameos are nice, I prefer the story of the Wii version just because it doesn't have characters just forced in there for fan service. There are also the half-pipe special stages in this game, and these are really fun. They're really easy, but they're just a blast to run through, man, and the music is just fantastic. But the biggest thing that the DS version has compared to the Wii version, in my opinion, is a secret supersonic final boss against the Mother Wisp, which, as the name implies, is the mother of all the wisps. But it's taken over by the evil wisp energy, or whatever. This is just really freaking cool, and such a good way to utilize supersonic in this game, especially considering that supersonic is just an extra unlockable in the Wii version of the game. I wish the Wii version, or even Colors Ultimate, had something like this for the people who went out of their way to unlock supersonic. So, that was Sonic Colors DS. This is understandably more well-received than the Wii version among Sonic fans, but I still think I prefer the console version of the game, mainly because it's just more fun if you ask me. But you should definitely give the DS version a whirl if you haven't yet. It's definitely a hidden gem in the Sonic franchise. Moving on to Sonic Generations on the 3DS. So we all know Sonic Generations from the HD version nowadays, because it's just a really fun game that doesn't really do anything wrong. The main gimmick of Sonic Generations, of course, was the gameplay variety, because half of the game was similar to the classic Sonic games as he played as classic Sonic, and he controlled similar to the old Genesis games. Modern Sonic, on the other hand, is controlled much more akin to the newer Boost style Sonic. Sonic games. This just made Sonic Generations a fun experience throughout because you never got burnt down on one style of gameplay. Now, similar to the other ports in this video, there are a lot of differences between the 3DS version and the HD version. Since we're already talking about the gameplay, I'm just going to go ahead and mention that since the modern Sonic stuff in this game is all 2D, it doesn't really provide that much distinction from the normal classic Sonic gameplay. You still have the boost, the homing attack, you know, everything that modern Sonic is supposed to have. So the modern Sonic gameplay is, I guess, much more similar to Sonic Rush rather than Sonic Unleashed or Sonic Colors if you want to look at it that way. This is already not great, because part of what made the HD version so good was the distinction between the two gameplay styles. Oh, but guess what? In the 3DS version, Classic Sonic gains access to the homing attack midway through. And like, just, what? Why? This only further blurs the line between the gameplay styles, which is just not cool at all. Now, I will point out the fact that the homing attack isn't unlockable for Classic Sonic in the HD version, but that's all it is, an unlockable. The classic levels aren't designed around the homing attack in the HD version, but they are in the 3DS version. Okay, so those are really my only nitpicks with the 3DS version. No, no, I'm just kidding, of course. Global design is actually trash. Like, really, really bad, especially in the second half of the game. Countless bottomless pits, poor enemy placement, the whole nine yards, it's all here. It wouldn't be a dimps game without this garbage. Something that's cool about this version is that all the boss fights and levels, with the exception of Green Hill, of course, are completely different from the HD version. We still have the same three errors from the HD version, but the levels are totally different. Instead of Chemical Plant, we got Casino Night. Instead of Speed Highway, we got Emerald Coast. This is really cool, but this was just a huge missed opportunity. What if the 3DS version only took levels from handheld Sonic games, it would have been a great way to tap into the history of handheld Sonic games because the console version has little to no representation of those games. I mean, they did add Water Palace from Sonic Rush, which is neat, but what if every level was from a handheld Sonic game? What if in the classic era we had levels from the 8-bit Game Gear Sonic games? What if we had Sonic Advance representation in the Dreamcast era? There's just so much they could have done with this, but it just kills me to think about what could have been. The boss fights are also different, but we still have the rival fights, but instead of them being normal boss fights, they're just races. Yeah, these kind of suck. 
They also added special stages in this game, and they took inspiration from the ones in Sonic Heroes, oh god. But hey, they actually control well this time around, and they're actually pretty fun. Easy, but still pretty fun. But at the end of the day, yeah, this is definitely still Sonic Generations, just really watered down and not very fun. So if you want to play this version, I would say go for it, but nah, I wouldn't recommend it. Last, but certainly least we have Sonic Lost World on the 3DS. This was actually the first version of the game I owned, and after getting the Wii U version, I never looked back. Of course, there are many differences in this version of the game. One of the most notable things is that this game is actually 3D this time around, unlike Sonic Generations 3DS port, which is kind of jarring, I won't even lie, but it's still kind of cool. The level designs are also completely different, which again, shouldn't be a surprise by now. So, Sonic Lost World on the Wii U had its BS moments within the levels, but with the 3DS version, the amount of shit in this game is just ramped up to the max. The filler is unreal. Real. For one, the levels just feel kind of disorganized in a way, it's kind of hard to explain. And for two, there are just so many trash stage gimmicks and puzzles to pad out the levels. This causes some of the levels to last well over 10 minutes, which just isn't acceptable in the slightest. This version is definitely more challenging than the Wii U version, but the challenge isn't a result of good design, it's a result of just so much filler. I hate to just chalk it up to dimps being dimps, but I have no other choice. There is absolutely no reason to have this amount of BS to pad out the levels. But the levels aren't the only issue I have with this port. Sonic just feels kind of slippery to control, I guess you could say. His movements feel much more sensitive and just a little too responsive, but that's just a minor nitpick. He also has this neat air kick shockwave attack thing, which is absent in the Wii U version, and it looks pretty cool, I guess. And similar to Sonic Colors on the DS, the game also has two exclusive wisps. Lightning is fine enough, I guess, but Quake is actually pretty fun. The game also has special stages, and oh, what the actual hell is this, man? Okay, so honestly, the special stages in the previous ports in this video were actually pretty good. But who thought it was a good idea to use the 3DS's gyro controls? This just makes it so uncomfortable to play these levels. I mean, just imagine trying to play these in a public setting. You would look like a lunatic. But out of all of the D-makes mentioned in this video, I believe that Sonic Lost World is the worst one, because I can at least find some enjoyment in the other games, but interestingly enough, the 3DS port of Lost World has actually divided the Sonic community. Some people actually love this version of the game and think it's miles better than the Wii U slash PC version, and then you have the people like me who think it's a steaming pile of garbage. I would not recommend playing this version at all. If you want to play the game, then play either the Wii U or PC version of the game, because those are actually good games if you ask me. Alright, so that's gonna wrap up this video, guys. Let me know what you all think about the Sonic Dimps demakes in the comment section down below, and which one is your favorite? Also, huge thanks to FC Playthroughs for providing the footage used in the handheld games featured in this video. I just didn't have a good way of recording footage for those games. But that's it for me, guys, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.